Welcome to another episode of Israel in Asia. Israel in Asia. Today, uh, we're going to be covering the Philippines, focusing on the Philippines within the Southeast Asian Sea. Um, a lot of this material that we're going to be covering has been covered in previous videos. Please go watch those videos. So a lot of material I will not be reading. I will be focusing on the scriptures. So uh, and the new material that I did provide that is, isn't in other videos. So all the new material is usually in the front of the, of the video. So stand by and uh, I will definitely uh, give you that material right off the bat. Let's go. So here we are. Philippines. The reason why I'm focused on the Philippines, as you can tell in the other videos, I did focus on Southeast Asia showing that and confirming that there was a slave trade from China, Japan, Korea, India, all into the Southeast Asian Sea. However, Philippines is very, very unique in the Southeast Asian Sea. Why? Because if you look at this map and if you look at the details that we are providing here, Philippines was not just in the Southeast Asian Sea. Philippines was in Mexico. Philippines was in Cuba. Philippines is the name of the land given to the people by King Philip. I've had arguments with people saying which King Philip it was. It doesn't matter. That was how the Philippines got their name from King Philip. So in the Philippines, it was given by King. It was the, the name of the Philippines was given by the name of King Philip, which is a proverb. And if you see on the right side, it's well, historically there was a part of land in Mexico that was called New Philippines. And if you read here, uh, Pinero de Ro was one of the largest cities in Cuba, founded by the Spanish. On September 10, 1867, the city in the province was found as New Filipinas, New Philippines, in response to the influx of Asian laborers coming from the Philippine Islands to work on tobacco plantations. So, our landmass doesn't define who we are, just like uh, someone being called African American. That's the name of two Italians. That is not who you are. However, this is confirming even more that the Filipinos are a bribe and priverb and more closely to Israel than any other, any other landmass in Southeast Asia. So let's look at the relationship of Southeast Asia according to Ephraim and Manasseh. Now there are a lot of camps and a lot of schools, uh, schools of thought that teaches Ephraim is Puerto Rico, Manasseh is Cuba. Not rejecting that at all. I 100% agree. However, we're neglecting that this is a worldwide northern tribe is 10 tribes largely around the world. So they're not all occupied on the western side of the world. There was a migration on the eastern side of the world. However, just a sheer coincidence, the Treaty of Paris of, Paris of 1898 was a treaty signed by the Spanish and Americans on December 10, 1980, 19, uh, 1898 that ended the Spanish-American War, which was a hoax actually. Under it, Spanish relinquished its claim of sovereignty over the title of Cuba, also ceded Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines to be under which kingdom? The United States. The secession of the Philippines involved a commission, a, a, a compensation of twenty million dollars from the U.S. to Spain. And if you go to Deuteronomy 28, 68, they will show buy you and they should sell, sell you and no one should buy you. So it looks like the almost the whole land was purchased and anyone in it was under that regime of America, just like the Cubans and just like Puerto Rico. In fact, this this prophecy and this knowledge and this wisdom and this understanding is coming more prevalent today when you got people writing books called the Latins of Asia, the Latins of Asia. They are now starting to identify that the Filipinos are more related to Hispanics 
than the Asians because guess what? They probably are closely related to those individuals than the Asians. But now, let's use biblical scriptures to identify to see how closely does this align with history in biblical texts. So let's read Genesis 49, 22 through 26. Joseph, we talk about Ephraim and Manasseh again. Joseph is a fruitful bound, even a fruitful bound by a well whose branches run over a wall. I wish I could find out what this wall means, but I got a strong feeling this wall means on both sides of the world, west and east. Maybe wrong, but I'm just assuming right now. But let's look at the next word. The arches have solely grieved him and shot at him. Which arches? And hated him. So which arches are we talking about? The arches, those that when, when they went into Asia as the Tartarians in the, in the, um, in the Sithenians, they were fighting wars with archers, bows, and arrows. How do we know? Let's look at the next scripture. But his bows abound in strength. So he's saying that, but his, uh, his bow abound in strength, and the arms of his hand were made strong by the hands of the Almighty God. So God is actually giving prophecy, telling you, telling Ephraim and Manasseh that I'm going to let your bows, your bows, and your fighting abound mighty because of God of Jacob. Oh, okay, he's going to give them strength. He's going to give them victory. That's what it's saying. From thence to the shepherd and the stone of Israel. So he's going to give them victory. Even by the God of thy father who shall help thee. He's going to help you get victory. And by the almighty who shall bless thee with the of heaven above. Blessing of the deep that lies under and blessing of the beast and of the womb. And blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors, your enemies, upon to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. We're talking about the hills of Asia. Be honest with you, there's a lot of hills out there. They shall be the head of Joseph. And on the crowns of the head of him that was separated from thy brother which is the southern tribe, Judah. So he's going to have crowns upon thy head. Historically, there were emperors. There were, um, there were um, rulers in Asia that ruled for years after God gave them victory. And they had crowns upon their heads over in this side of the world. They are in multiple books. Multiple books. That they ruled for a certain time. And there were people over here evaluating. The Jesuits was evaluating what made them and who were they. And of course, as always, Esau come in, infiltrated, and overturned them. And we're going to confirm that with scriptures. Let's use the scriptures. But however, let's focus on this. Hosea 7, 8. It says, Ephraim has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. So who is he going to mix himself with if he's not in the other lands? I, can can he mix somebody with? The, I mean, those the, the the Judah went in Africa. If he mixed with Africans, he's not gonna look like a cake not turned. But if he mixed with the other people, he's gonna look like a cake not turned. So you gotta mix with somebody that's like not like you for you to look like cake not turned. So bottom line is, he mixed with probably he mixed with probably uh, Moab and, and Ammon and all those individuals. You know you know Elam. And also Esau, we know that. So now let's go look at some. Let's look at some more scriptures to confirm how this is going to turn out. Uh, Jeremiah twelve eight, nine, my heritage is, is a t uh, upon uh, unto me a speckled bird, a bird around about thee, are against her. Oh, that's going back to this uh, Genesis scripture. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. So all the beasts of the fields will come to devour, but I'm going to give you victory according to Genesis 49. I'm going to give you victory for those other beasts of the field. And we're going to prove that. Watch this. 
So Isaiah 66, 19. It says, I will send, I will send a I will set a sign among them. Oh, who are we talking about? We about who are we talking about? I will send a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of thee unto the nations. From Tarsha. Oh, that's Japheth people. Okay, we're not even talking about Moab and, and Ammon now. We're just talking about Japheth and Paul and Lump in London that draw the bow to Tobo and Java. Oh, that's no, oh, that's definitely Japheth. To the isles far off. This is where he said, I was in the Gentiles and the isles all far off. Now, why are we talking about the isles? Because don't forget, we're talking about the Philippines. Now, that have not heard the fame, neither have seen my glory. And thy and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. If you go back to the Genesis book of scripture, I read, he said, I'm going to give you victory and they will know who I am by giving them victory among the Gentiles, whether that was just in Moab or whether that was just in Ammon or whether that was with the Japhites. However, he gave them victory because he said he prophesied in the last days that what would happen. Now, those people are in those lands. I'm not going to read this book below. However, this book below does highlight the mixture of people that cake not turn within the uh, Southeast Asia, predominantly the Philippines, and the type of origin they would come from, the, from the Negroes, the, uh, the um, Australians, you know, the Malaysians, all those people look very similar. However, biblical prophecy proves and confirms they would be there. It's not a, it's not, it's, it's not a, a guessing. It's, it's, it's a fact. Let's go. Look. Let's look at Ezekiel 39. One through six. Therefore, thou son of man prophesied against Gog, and say, Thou saidst the Lord God, behold, I am against thee. Oh, that's the people he says gonna set against them. Gook, the chief princes of Meshach and Tobo, and I will turn thy back and leave, but the sixth part of thee I will cause thee to come up again uh, from the north. That's talking about. Um, when the Tartars went to um, to Russia from the north part, and I will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So he's talking, about, I'm gonna bring you upon the mountains of Israel. He's telling them that, and I will smite thee, and I will smite thy bow out of thy hand. Oh, so he's telling them, he's prophesying to, he was prophesying saying, I'm gonna give Manasseh and them victory, and now he's telling. Um, Japheth, I'm going to smite you and I'm going to have your bow. He says, I will smite the bow out of thy left hand and I will cause thy arrows to fall out of thy right hand and thou shalt fall unto the mountains of Israel. Thy and all thy bands and all the people that is with thee, I will give thee upon the raven birds, the speckled birds of all sorts. Mm, see, all sorts, the speckled birds in to the beast of the field to be devoured. So he's telling Japheth, Israel is going to devour you because I'm going to give them victory so that they can confirm that I am God. There are books that are saying they knew who these people were even though they looked almost just like them. Genesis 9, 7, 27. God shall enlarge Japheth and he shall, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. Just saying that they're going to be dwelling together. So realize where there's Japheth, there's also Shem. Where there's Israel, you know, you have, I, I, I don't have those scriptures in there. I don't think I do. But they does say they will be dwelling with Moab. They will be dwelling with Japheth. It's in the scriptures. Now, the confusions and faces. This is just one of the books where we can confirm that they were there. If you go and look it up, Google it, go to archives.gov or whatever, .org, look it up. You can find it. Read the book. The fifth column is, is any group of people who undermine a larger group from within. Who? So why would they, how can they undermine? Well, because they look just like them. It says, usually a favorite of enemy groups. So who were the enemies? We're the enemies of Satan. We they couldn't stand us. They couldn't stand Israelites. So how do we know? Let's if you go to Ezra's 12, 
44, which is in the Apocrypha, declare, it says, it says, declare unto us that in all nations, in all nations, not just in North America, but in South America, Central, and I mean, in uh, Asia, Europe, and all these other countries, in all these nations, throughout the world, there is, there was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations. God had laws that was contrary to everyone else and continuously despised the commandments of the kings, the commandments of man, the commandments of the world. So as the united of our kingdoms, honorable intended by us cannot go for it. They mean we can't rule in all, you know, all united as one. So guess what? We were our enemy and guess what we are today? We are an enemy of the world. It's a fact. Japan. So, how do we know they were in Japan? Well, there are several books out there already. The Ancient History of Japan. Look it up. Read it. But I'm going to go to this one. This is also the fifth column of Japan. If these secret Jews are rooted out and stripped of their power, and the Japan, and Japan and Chinese follow their policy, follow a policy in favor of this race and nation, and rejects pressures from the Israelites and the American Jews, the whole of Asia could eventually follow their example and free themselves and our country from Jewish domination. Hold up. Hold up. So basically, they had power in Japan and China. The Maturians, the emperors, they had power in there and they wanted to pressure them to reject their power and infiltrate them so they can follow American Jews don't make sense. Think about it. However, they were there and they were following the prophecy that was in Genesis was being fulfilled at this time because guess what? They were following these people that were in power that had confusion of faces that looked just like the Japanese and Chinese. A little darker, but they looked just like them. All right, jo uh, John 11 to 48. And if we let them thus alone, all men will believe on them. So basically, they like, hey, we can't leave these guys alone because they're going to believe in them. And we got to we got to convert these guys because then Israel will stay in power. Now, prophecy will show they will fall again. But prophecy in Genesis told you that they will be have crowns upon their heads for a moment of time, which they did. Now, let's go to China. Now, these are probably talking about the Maturians and the Tartars that were there. The Tarians, they were there. So when they were there, what was going on later? Mixed marriages had increased in numbers of the fifth columnist Israelites. So these are the Tartars and the Maturians. Look it up. They were Israelites. Who's okay? And I'm sorry. Let me say, Sathenians. Those were Israelites as well. Whose racial appearance is Chinese, but who is secretly a member of the nation of Israel. So they looked like they were Chinese, but they were Israel. Increasing in this way, the clandestine, the clandestine Israelites, fifth columns, although we believe that the Chinese population resulted from these mixed marriages may still be small, it would be an important investigation to calculate the number of clandestine Jews in China. They were not sure who they were dealing with. They just know they had to investigate. They send Jesuits. They send... Uh, uh, Cordis, um, um, can't think of the name of them right now, but they would send Corquisados to come and investigate. To let, that's why they even have these books by these people because they were going to investigate and saying where are they and who are they because they look just like them. So all these individuals are on what side of the world? This is Asia. These books, books after books after books of people in India, China, and Japan and Asia. And these were Israelites that were there. Do you think they were shipped into slavery? Back into some of them were slipped back into Africa. That is true. But you think they were slipped all, all into Central America, the Caribbean islands, and America and South America and North America, and that's it? No. Do not vex Ephraim. You're vexing Ephraim if you're not acknowledging the northern tribes of Asia. The northern tribes of Asia do exist. Pay attention and read the scriptures. They are there. 
So let's use the same doctrine that is highlighted in all these books when we use Deuteronomy 28, 68. I shall send you into Egypt again in ships by the way whereof I speak of thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies as bond men and bond, bond women, and no one shall buy you. So now we know people were sold from that were that migrated into the mountains of Africa, eventually got sold into slavery into North America, South America, and the Caribbeans. So this prophecy is going to happen to all Israel. We already read the prophecy that God will send them to conquer and have crowns on their heads. And that only happened in Asia. But this prophecy had to be fulfilled, correct? So did these people go into slavery? Did they? Let's see. Ho, oh, wait a second. What's this? Korean and Japan traded to Southeast Asia in a book called the Mikado Empire? Let's read it. The Protestants and Dutch and English straight uh, stirred up a hatred and fear of the Japanese against what Japanese? Those that had crowns upon their head. Finally, against each other, Spaniards, Portuguese, blackened the, char the, the character of the heretics and viciously abused each other when it served their interests. So they kind of they kind of played them against each other, all of which compelled the stirred Japanese to um, to contrive how to use them once against each other. Yep, they turned them against. So so you had you had the rulers and you had the servants and they made them fight in a fight with each other. Of course, who was who was these people? Portuguese and Spaniards. Esau. Esau perpetrated hatred and turned them and divided them and, and turned them against each other. He does the same thing every time. So all foreigners, but especially Portuguese then, were slave traders and thousands of Japanese were brought and sold and shipped to Macau. Oh, they were shipped to China, in, in China, and to Philippines. So suddenly now we have this inner fight in this civil war in Japan, and now we got a slave trade going to China and the Philippines. Do you see the curse? Now they had crowns upon their head, and boom, the prophecy had to be fulfilled. They had to be sold into slavery to fulfill the prophecy. It says long civil wars. There we go, the civil wars. Mm, it seems like we had a lot of civil wars in China. We had a lot of civil wars in Japan, and we had a lot of civil wars in Korea. What a coincidence. So the long civil wars and the misery caused by them in an, ex, in a, an expedition, an expedition to K Korea had so impoverished that so they, their civil war had impoverished the people that slaves became so cheap. Even the Malayas and the Negro servants of the Portuguese speculated in the bodies of Japanese slaves who were brought and sold and transported. They said, I will buy and what? And by the way, uh, Niyasaki that was bombed. Those a lot of that area was Israel, and I got a strong feeling they were Israel when that island was bombed. So, did a slave trade happen? That's just one example. Let's go to the next. So, South China, don't forget, they just traded some people from Japan to Macau. So, if they went to Macau and they lived in Macau, and by the way, there were people in Macau way back in BC that were African slaves. In fact, this talks about it. It says, during the 1800s, now be prior to this, they were there too. The Southern China, like the, the um, Cantonese uh, people began to immigrate into Southeast Asia during, due to the violence uprising. So they started in, and so they started immigrating to the Southeast Asia. No, they would start being sold or they were in, trying to escape. Uh, to the uprising rebellion and civil war, that was that civil war word again, in southern China against the crumbling Qing dynasty, during this time, there were multiple wars that were raging across southern, southern China from ethnic rebellions and persecution. Ethnic rebellions, down they fighting with each other because they weren't the same people. Persecution, they were persecuted because they were probably Jews, but guess what? They were actually acting as Muslims. To ban it into inv invasions, the black flag armies, even the infamous uh, Tevilese rebellions that revoked against the, the uh, 
the Maturians ruling over ethnic Southern Hun minorities. Ooh, so the Maturians, I think those were guys that had the crowns upon their head over, revoked against them. Oh, so they revoked against them because they wanted the Southern Hun, which is probably Moab and Mem, to have power now. See it? Do you see it? The reasons why this destination from from Thailand, Cambodia, northern, southern, in, in southern Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, was partly due to the fact that they were also important trade routes in cities to Chinese merchants as early as the 1400s. During the 1600s and 1200s was also a time during French, Dutch, and British colonies ruled the Southeast Asian, uh, Southeast Asian Sea, or all of a sudden they over here infiltrating, causing ruckus, became more evident that gathering the attentions of especially the British colonists to gain more laborers, thus trafficking South, Southern China laborers that eventually would heavily impop and populate the places like Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, Philippines, and all these places. Basically, they opened the door to slave trade and justified because they needed labor, so they sold you in slavery and they put you down in Southeast Asia. Another source of proof. Did the trade did, did, the, did they get sold into slavery? Yes. India. Let's go to India. Now this one, I'm just going to use scripture because we know Macau. Everybody knows about the the um, the gold the gold. Um, uh, Spanish Inquisition, the, the, all, all the all the Asian Spanish Inquisitions, the Malabar Inquisition, the the um, Kojin Spanish Inquisitions, those all happened and they were sold. Some was back to Africa, as this map shows, and a lot of them were sent into Southeast Asia and was sold. And it also meets the prophecy. And in uh, Isaiah 11, 11 through the three, 13. It says, and I shall come to pass that that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnants of his people, which shall uh, which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathos, from Cush, from Elam, from Sinai, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Well, we got to figure out what sea we're talking about. There's a lot of them out there. And he shall set up an ensign from the nations. And they shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the disperse of Judah and the four corners of the earth. Four corners of the earth. Four corners. Was there a slave trade there? Plenty of evidence saying that it was. Just a coincidence. Let's just use this as an example of India. So... There's a famous dance in the Philippines called the Taklin. as a tradition Philippine folk dance which originated from during the Spanish Inquisition. So it's suddenly, you know, they say some people, it's an argument about it. Why is the Filipinos going to argue about where this came from? However, no one knows how long that uh, the Missourians have been doing this, has been doing this same dance in India. Philippines was under slavery of Christianity and many of the Missourians Mozorims were captured slaves and converted into Christianity. Here is a book that shows proof in, of 1800s. Captured slaves in war of raids and on villages. One many captured a man and woman. One arrived in his village where he reported his captures to the chief and kept the captives as a slave. The chief could claim the captives for his procession, but the captures always gave upper hand, always given the upper hand. The people and relatives of the captures may give ransom to to uh, to he, to them captures for the release of the captives. In general, such slaves were treated like kindly. Many of them got married and did not like to return to their original village, even when they were freed. There were instances that the captives escaped from the capturer and freed himself. The coming of the British to Missouri, to Missouri was a landmark in the history of slavery in the country because after some time, slavery was legal 
legally prohibited in the land. Father, the progressive the progression of conversions into Christianity had been so ra rapid in the in the Christian faith is deadly against slavery. But they were sold into slavery. They were taken and captured. So that particular area, just of just one area of of India that most people don't talk about, and the only reason why we're talking about this area is because of this tradition that was now in the Philippines. Is this a coincidence? I don't know. I hope somebody do the research and send a message and tell me where, where how this connects. Now, let's look at the curses. Because these curses, we already talked about a few slides ago. America purchased Guam, purchased Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines. So when they purchase all these countries, suddenly now there's a war. Why is there a war? I mean, it should be, I mean, they only bought them. It should be good to go, right? Nah. Well, they went to them, they brought them, and of course, instantly started persecuting them. Why would you think they would persecute them? Why didn't the Philippines just fold over? Because they probably knew they were the devil. But, um, you know, massacres, hangings, all throughout the war. This is in my first presentation. It's a long one. It's the one that's an hour. But However, you got all this data of Filipinos being killed, murdered, hung as a act of war against the Filipinos. And then somebody argued a long time ago that, you know, Filipinos had more history and more, more, more ancestries than just the Spanish colon, um, colonialism. Well, yes, you do. But just a coincidence, why did the Spaniards purchase the Philippines of all countries in Asia? Because all the other countries were purchased somewhere else, somewhere else. Look at that. Pay attention to it. The only country in Asia that was, part, that was, that was colonized by the Spaniards. What a coincidence. And they were shackled. They were hung. These are people that was good, that was set to be hung even after they were in prison. So somebody like, oh no, they never went to slavery, they never had shackles on their feet, they never got hung like the like like the African Americans or like the Puerto Ricans or like the like like the Native Americans. You're lying. You're not doing your homework because you don't care, because guess what? It stays to Ephraim, and guess what? You're repeating history. The 12 tribes has 10 tribes that are Manasseh and Ephraim. They are huge. And if you do, if you, most of you guys out there that's, that's, that's know this stuff, y'all know Ephraim and Manasseh didn't just go to North America. You know that. You got the books. You just stop at India and don't go past that. Continue to do the research. This is what I'm doing, and this is why I'm doing it. More hangings. Why would you hang somebody who knows a war? I mean, won't you just kill the guy? No, it should be an act of war, right? Should just strictly no. When they hung us and they hung them, it was the form of submission. You get them, they hang them, you you public humiliate them and kill them in front of the public, so the public will conform. If it was truly an act of war. All you had to do is just kill the person. That simple. But no, they made sure they had multiple hangings to subdue the people. They were one people. And actually, if you go back to Vietnam or Vietnam, I wonder why they went there. This is not an all nations message. This is a message of curses and prophecies and scriptures that is confirmed and true and historical historical it's a fact more hangings during the war what does hanging have to do with the act of war why do you have to hang the people to say you at war with them no you see the crowd here watching and observing it was a form of conditioning so that this thing can stop so that they can so they can, so are they still there absolutely because eventually they subdued themselves just like the african americans did too just like the puerto ricans and all the rest of us hmm that looks just like oh those are photos oh i'm sorry those are photos from the spanish acquisition yeah that was back in the in spain and in uh, portugal in those areas when they first started right 
that looks very, very similar to what we are looking at right now. Hmm. Even to the point of, hey, oh yeah, Asian and Spanish, it, it, black and Spanish hate. Oh, the span, the black guy perpetrated something against the span, uh, against the 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 the, the Asian dude. Oh, they always try to turn us against each other. And if you do history and you read it, you will learn that when they sent the Buffalo soldier in the Philippines, they instantly could not fight them. And they instantly did not feel enjoy fighting them. One, first of all, they were being persecuted by the same per people. And then two, they was like, yo, why are we doing this to our people that are just like us? Now, was they just talking color? Could be. But it was kind of interesting they send it sent a black brigade over there to fight the pot the fight the fight and you see all the slaughter they did i mean think about it they get hung these guys were getting hung in america and then they go over to a, go over to the philippines and watch them get hung in the philippines what motivation is that if you watch this movie called the great the real glory of 1939 you will actually even see in that movie that the that people that call themselves the Moors weren't considered the Philip weren't considered Filipinos. They weren't. So what were they? Now I have that in one of my other presentations. You can go look at it. But I guarantee you, you will see that a lot of these people were Israel. A lot. Mm, more killings. Now, why is this important? Well, if somebody said things meet the curses, okay, sure. Show me someone else that got all this kind of uh, this kind of this, this this kind of slaughter. You know, hey, are, how come they ain't showing these? I mean, are they showing these pictures for um, for the Russian war right now? Hmm. They're not just slaughtering people like this, but they sure did it in the Philippines. They sure did. And then, of course, you know, if they couldn't get them to talk, you know, they just put yokes around, irons around the neck and try to get them to talk. Hey, you know, if you don't listen to what I'm saying, I'm going to put yokes of iron around your neck. You saw chains and shackles earlier. And now they're naked with yokes of irons around the neck. Um, and also they were sent to concentration camps into Guam, which is another land they purchased during that time. You know, Philippines was banished and sent it to concentration camps. And, and he were killed. So it's kind of like Babylon, you know, transferring, you know, from Babylon to um, Assyrian captivity. You know, the Spanish purchased, you know, purchased the Philippines. So it went from the Spain to American captivity. America's like, I know, America tapped out and say, I got it from here. We know what to do with these guys because we know them because we enslaved them before. We slaved them over in Mexico. Oh, we slaved them over in Puerto Rico. We slave the same guys in Cuba. And by the way, we're going to take them to Cuba where they are the same people. We just, 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 just keep displacing them and dislocating them and separating them from their families. And this is how we're going to get, the, get them to submit to us. And guess who's doing the torturing? Their own people. Who did the weapons of the African-Americans? Their own people. Look at that guy. Great sharp uniform. The white guy standing guard. The Filipino dude in the back is doing the torturing. Guess what would happen if the guy didn't do the torture? The guy in the back would get killed too. Hmm. He would put yokes of iron upon thy necks. Now, don't talk about this in scripture, but I find a sheer interesting coincidence of what they did during the Spanish Inquisition, a form of torturing. It's the same thing they did in the Filipino War. And they, they consider this harmless. This was not a harmful form of torture, but it was effective. Please go to these links. If you think the Philippines are not still under the curse, go look at these links. They still send us uh, human trafficking, slavery. They even have a slave law because they're trying to stop this. They even have a woman that's been enslaved in America by another family for almost 40 years. And then, by the way, even, even African Americans are hating on the Philippines and calling them the Negroes of Asia. So now they got ni multiple nicknames. They either the Negroes of Asia, they either the Latins of Asia, or more likely they're like the Northern Tribe of Asia. 
Do your homework. I hope this is good information.